The advice and opinions expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. said you're going to lose some services so take advantage of anything that you get fit it into your you know tetris schedule in a way that makes sense for you but if somebody is offering you some help and support take it and fit it into the thing we'll talk more about this in a second uh use a visual schedule this is one of those things that's going to take a little bit of effort now but make it your craft project make it your mother's day craft project or your father's day craft project right that and and there are so many visual schedules, and every kid's visual schedule looks different because kids, some kids need a, um, a, a picture one like this, but notice that there are text words with it as well, and it has the time. Other kids would need that in the clock. Um, you know, at, at visual schedules are very different. You can do it on their phone, on your phone, on the wall. They sell these on Pinterest. If you put in, go to Pinterest and put in, or go to Etsy, and put in visual schedule and then pick the one you want. It might be five dollars. You're helping somebody who loves to craft, you know, be able to stay feeding their kids, or do it yourself. But a visual schedule, it's part of the set it and forget it method, and it actually will lower your stress and it will lower your child's stress. If I asked you to go to work every day and said, I don't know what's gonna happen, there's no schedule, be prepared for anything, and then five minutes into anything, I come in and go, now we're doing this, and you didn't know, you'd be cranky. Your kids will too. Visual schedule, key. That's why it's number two. Uh, number three, you gotta schedule one fun thing a day. Now notice it says one fun thing a day. Because sometimes we're like, we're going to do 13 fun things today. And right around 10, everybody starts crying. Right? Because it's too much. Schedule one fun thing a day. And it could be literally anything. It could be going and hosing each other down. <laughs> it could be walking around the block. It doesn't have to be money. It could be getting an ice cream cone if that's something that your kid can eat. Right? One fun thing a day. Sufficient on today. One. One fun thing a day. Uh, okay, number four. Put, pick three skills from the last year to perfect. Now, this could be something that your child was working on in OT. It could be something that they're working on in speech. It could be something that they worked on in school that they just kind of struggled with, didn't get there. So we're going to pick three for the summer. Three things. Like it might be handwriting, but you're struggling with handwriting from last year. Or it could be the multiplication tables. Right? You're going to pick three things, and you're going to find fun ways to attack those. We'll talk more about this in a second. But here is key. We're going to pick three things that are coming around the bend for next year. As this school year ends, you should be talking to the team saying, what are the things that you see that it might be a problem for the coming year? Like, are we going to start doing money skills? Uh, do we need to know how much the value of a quarter is by the 10th day of school? Because then we start working on it over the summer. If you have a kiddo who's just going to be starting school, then maybe you work on moving from center to center. We'll talk about this. But we're picking three things from last year and th three things from the school year coming up. Up, and we're going to target those with fun. Uh, number six, we are going to get physical every day, and preferably outdoors, but you know, sometimes it rains, sometimes it's too hot, whatever, but we are going to get physical on a regular basis. It helps us to regulate ourselves, and it helps to regulate our kids, for them to self-regulate. We need to do this, and we have a little bit more time, so we're going to do this, but we're going to see how we fold this into all of the fun stuff. Uh, number seven, we're going to go at least one place we've never been every week. This is good for your brain, and it's good for your kiddo's brain, because it's going to help us to work on flexibility. So it doesn't have to be like something that you get on a plane and are on a plane for seven hours. It could be going to a different grocery store. But we're going to go one new place every week, and we're going to schedule that. Uh, number eight, we're going to sing, dance, draw, paint, whatever. We're going to find a creative outlet 
to be able to do on a regular basis um, because that's super important. Uh, number nine, you are going to read to or with your child every night. Everybody take a breath. I know this can sometimes feel like a tourniquet around your neck because like, ah, oh, I'm going to do it every night. But I think you're going to find that it will end up being the thing that you enjoy most in your life. And it will pay bigger dividends probably than most things in your life. So you're going to do this. We'll talk about this in a second. Uh, number 10, you're going to take pictures and video. And this is not just you. I want to really encourage you for you to take pictures of your child to commemorate whatever it is that you're doing, but then hand a camera that is safe for your child to, to work with to your child and let them take pictures. We'll talk about why this is super duper important. And number 11, you are going to feed your child's passion. If, you're, if your child loves Thomas the Tank, then you're going to find a way to feed that passion this summer. It may not be every day, but it might mean because Thomas the Tank does this touring thing where they go to different cities. They used to before the pandemic. I would think they're doing it again this summer. And they have like a festival that they pull into a town and they do. And if your kid loves Thomas the Tank, you got to go. My kid didn't even love Thomas the Tank if we would go to it every year because it's a pretty so If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, Make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook.